So happy to welcome on James McGregor, the captain of the Open University team. Hello, James. Hi, Gareth. So um, we've just watched you um, on University Challenge, but we're recording this beforehand, so I don't know what happens. So what I'm going to do uh, is is focus initially, at least, um, on how does a university like Open University go about getting a University Challenge team together? Bearing in mind, you're not located on a physical campus. You could be anywhere in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, you could be anywhere in the world. And it just so happened this year that, that our team really was kind of flung across across the UK. So um, I'm in Liverpool. We had one person in Canterbury, Kent, uh, one player in Edinburgh, one in Wales, uh, and then one in the Midlands. So it was really, honestly, you know, uh, really spread out. So the, the way that the OU uh, puts the team together is that, Anyone can apply, and any current student can apply, uh, whether they're undergraduate or postgraduate. And you start off by doing a written test online, uh, I suppose a little bit like like a wiki quiz mm. uh, online. Uh, there's not many questions in it. There's only about there's only about fifteen to twenty questions in the initial one, and you have to pick from three subject areas. Um, so those three are, I think, history and politics is the one I chose. There's a, a science one. And then I think there's like a um, art, arts and literature kind of one. Um, and you do a test in that chosen subject. If you get through that test, there's a minimum score. They don't tell you what it is. There's a minimum score. You then do a general one. Uh, and if you get through that, um, that that's, the, that's when the kind of serious serious recruitment starts, I suppose. Um, and there is then a, a, an online um, Zoom quiz, which, which took the form of a buzzer quiz uh, when I did it. So that's kind of, uh, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, so who's running this? Is this um, the university, students' union, past players? It's the students' union. So the students' union coordinate the team every year. And they organise that Zoom quiz. So there's about, about six of us in the room, and they were just asking us questions on the buzzer. You just use your you sort of chat as, as the buzzer. And uh, I suppose they, they pick the team through that. So there's a few different rooms. I think they narrow it down to about 25 people and then eventually choose the the five because it is a team of five that mm. will eventually make the show there's four players and then one reserve so that that's that's kind of how they do it and i suppose it's it's obviously going on your quiz and ability but they also want to see how you interact with the other players yeah. um how, how you sort of maybe take charge of an answer because as well as the buzzer elements of it there's a, a team game element as well which is the second part mm. uh, they start asking your team questions like the bonus questions on the show uh, and that's sort of how you interact together i suppose to see how well you do together as a team you're you're a fairly experienced player you play in the merseyside quiz leagues um you know you, you've got quite a lot of experience did that kind of single you out as being captain or was there some other process that, that kind of led to you being named captain? I think I think it was really that. I think I, I just had the most experience of anyone on the team. Um, I, I'd, I was the only person on the team who'd done any, any TV before, mm. uh, before this. And I was the only person on the team really who had any kind of sort of quiz, quiz experience in, in, in leagues or, or in Grand Prix. None of my teammates have ever done anything like that. Um, so they were all kind of, although they, they enjoyed sort of pub quizzing and, and watching TV quizzes and stuff, that they, they'd never done anything formal really at all. Uh, so I, I, it kind of went to me as the default really, uh, more than anything else. Yeah. So having been picked as captain, what influence do you then have over the the team and the preparation and everything going forward? You know, there's, there's five of you, as you said, obviously you have to narrow it down to a four. Do you have a role in that? No, um, so that that was that was chosen by the university. So that, that they chose the four of us to go on the show, and then they chose a reserve. Uh, then obviously the the producers can can alter that if they want. So we went down for the the interview uh, for the audition. I had to go down to London for that. We did that as as a five, uh, and we told them our our preference, you know, or you know the preference for the four. Uh, but I, I think the final decision is down to them. But but they stuck with with what the university had chosen. So they the four that um, OU chose. That's the four of us who, who entered the entered the competition in the end. Yeah. Um, so once you got your four or your five, yeah. how long was it kind of from that to audition, and then between audition and being on the show? It, it wasn't that long between uh, picking the five and audition. I, I got uh, we we did all the kind of online tests, and they said uh, you'll hear you'll hear from us by Monday if you're on the team or not. And I got an email on the Friday evening saying we'd like you to be captain. 
after that, it was only um, I was thinking about three or four weeks until we went down for the for the audition. Um, so it wasn't wasn't very long at all. Um, that was kind of a, uh, a an ordeal in itself. I, I think when people watch the show, you know, r- round one that the, the, they start, started last week, didn't it? They? And they're watching the all the round one games. It's kind of the start of the show for everybody. I think for all the teams, it, it's kind of the culmination of a of a, a process really because it's 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 difficult to even make the team for your university. And then obviously, I think it's something like 120 teams apply most mm-hmm. years for the show. Uh, and they choose 28 to go on there. So it's really um, it's really the sort of the end of the process for, for the teams actually getting on the show. It, it's, it, it's, been a, it's been a long, hard process getting on. Um, but yeah, from the audition, um, I think it was about, I think it was about a week until we heard I, I got a phone call. They, they just called. They called the captain. Um, I don't know if that's the case for everyone, but they called me up um, and said that they'd like to have us on. Uh, and that was, I think, between then and recording was about about two weeks. I think it wasn't. It wasn't very wow. long. Wow. So, yeah. so maybe maybe three weeks. But, no. Yeah, and then you've got to try and get these this disparate group of people practicing, yeah. understand each other's strengths, weaknesses, because particularly for you as captain. You've got to know who to turn to, who to listen to. So, yeah. how on earth do you cram that into two weeks? It's hard. I mean, I mean, we, I mean, I say two. It might have been three weeks or four weeks, but it, it was pretty short anyway. We mm. tried to do at least one practice session per week, mm. which was uh, it was just a kind of a case of us all joining a, a Zoom mm. room and um, spending a couple of hours um, asking each other questions. It, mm. It's all we, we we could really do. It, it is really difficult with, with being, I suppose. Other universities might have experienced this in the last couple of years because of COVID. But um, for the OU, it's always going to be a case yeah. of we're not on campus. We'd never met each other before before the audition in person. And that was the first time we'd met each other. Uh, so when we recorded the, the the round one show, that was the second time we'd met in, in, in person, you know. Um, yeah, it was, it was getting together in a Zoom room every week, um, practicing past questions. I've got a couple of... Um, university challenge books mm. uh, just kind of used as, as as question fodder um the the student union helped with that as well they sent us i think the i think the producers of the show send out past questions to universities as well to help you practice so we had a few uh, you know uh, you know 50 or 100 starters that we were using and, and bonus questions so that was all we did really was just kind of get together and, and, and do that and then obviously as as that as you do that i, I kind of worked out uh, as captain who was strong at what um, and we had a decent spread of um, subject matter that we, you know, that we were covered um, in our studies. So that that kind of helped as well. There was there was one person who was sciences, so you know he, he'd take the lead on on, on science based stuff and uh, and so on, really. And there was a lot of chat you may have been aware of last year about captaincy, seating positions. You know, seeming to ignore some people rather yeah. than others. Were you very conscious of that in terms of determining seating, and then when you were in studio, I was quite conscious of that. Um, they they left it up to us to decide on our seating position. Um, so obviously, the captain's in in seat three. I, I just left it up to the to the other players. I, I said to them, "Do you could you get any preference on where you'd like to sit?" Mm. Uh, a couple of them did. Um, so. W- we sat kind of where we wanted to really there was no there was no sort of um disagreements over that within our team um mm. nobody nobody really minded so but I, I was kind of really conscious of that because i'd seen that criticism that, that some teams got on on social media last year for you know people sort of perceived that they were ignoring players in the team i think no one well certainly a, a non a non quizzer wouldn't really understand the sort of time pressure you're under on the show and if you if you know an answer then i think you're just going to say it you know w- without consulting your team but I, I was kind of quite quite conscious of agreeing on an answer before we said it at least in the early you know in in the early part of, of a match before, mm. before you're under pressure um I, w- I was trying to try to be quite um i was going to be tr- trying to be quite obvious in, in doing that and, mm. and speaking to each member of the team even if just like a, okay okay go you know, it, mm. like, like that, really. Yeah, in a way, it's a shame that, that you you felt you had to do that rather than just focus on the questions. But that is the reality of the public scrutiny that you yeah. nowadays, isn't it? And I yeah. guess nobody wants to be the focus of a Twitter storm. 
No, definitely not. No, no. Um, one of the things we discussed on the channel has been um, the kind of broadening the scope of the questions and, and the canon. And, you know, for a long time, University Challenge was geared at a particular subset of the student body and a particular kind of relatively narrow part of the curriculum. But obviously it's been extending um, certainly the question matter the last few years. How aware of that were you and, and did you kind of factor that into prep that people might have to cover things that weren't part of their their natural strengths i'm aware of it i, I didn't really factor it into prep uh, if, if i'm honest um i just don't think we had time to i, I really mm. don't think we had time to so i i think anything kind of more um you know anything less traditional or, or kind of more obscure maybe we, we just didn't really have time to to, to, to go into it um the, the, the prep that we did was mainly from kind of past questions, um, things we'd found online, like example questions and things like that. Um, I, th I think with with the broadening of the of the curriculum, you've just got to kind of hope that you've got you've got knowledge on your team somewhere um, mm. that, that that's going to cover, um, you know, that's going to cover things. Okay, so now I, we're recording this before the show has gone out. I don't yeah. know the result, and yeah. I. I, I always like to kind of react kind of naturally to it on, on the show. So I'll ask you this question and try and answer it as much as you can without actually giving away the uh, right. result. What did you learn from your first episode? For all I know, it could be your only episode, but your first mm -hmm. episode that you wished you'd known before you went into studio. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think... I think the thing the thing I learned was ju just me personally was to be braver on the buzzer. Um, I think I think in in the fair, in the in the round one match I, I wasn't brave enough on the buzzer, and that that when people watch it, it might might sound daft that because um, well I, I didn't I didn't neg, but there was a couple of of buzzers I made that that weren't correct. Um, but there was there was more than one occasion where I I, I didn't buzz, mm. um, and someone else did on, on the opposite team, um, and I, I had the answer in my head before they would buzzed. If it was somebody on my team who did, I wouldn't care because we'd get it anyway. Mm. But um, but yeah, I, I think to be braver on the buzzer, it, it, it's it's strange. I, I've played in in some buzzer tournaments, um, not not too many, but I've I've played in a couple of the, the MQL buzzer tournament and the OQL mm. buzzer tournament. I've played in that twice, and it, it's such a different. Um, such a different ball game mm. pl playing on the show in the studio. Mm. I've done TV before. I've never been been too nervous, but it was the most most nervous I, I've ever been um, on on that round one match. Um, it really was. I think with a buzzer tournament as well, you know that if you if you slip up and and you lose a match, mm. you, you you're not finished. You, you know you, you kind of get a second chance. You, you go straight on to the next match. Whereas yeah. it's not the case with 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 a, a university challenge. Um, you may get a second chance uh, as a as a highest scoring loser, um, but but you probably won't. So I, I think balancing that out it is tough, and uh, it's, it's supposed to be tough, isn't it? It's university challenge, it, uh, it should be tough. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's what I really learned was to kind of be be braver on the buzzer. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us, James. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to catch up with you and actually talk about the gameplay um, at some point and. Um, and you know, have you on um, live in the studio at some point yep. during Quizzy Monday? Um, but for now, really appreciate you coming on and sharing those insights. I think it's really interesting for people to understand how you know how teams even get onto the show in the first place. And um, best of retrospective luck uh, for the match and for the tournament as a whole. And uh, yeah, hope to chat to you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Gareth. Bye -bye. Cheers. Cheers.